If you're not in the process of being defined by a vision of the future, you are left with the old circuitry and the emotions of the past, and you will be predictable in your life. And if you are doing those same things every single day, and you're in that routine, the soul is watching reruns of the same television show. Wouldn't you get bored after a while? And it falls asleep on the couch. And the soul goes to sleep and the ego takes over. And you crave the familiar. And the unknown is the soul's agenda. The journey back to source. And tell stories of its adventure. And you tell me. If the soul is interested in the unknown and the adventure. If you're stuck on some emotion that's keeping you anchored to the past, the soul can't go to a new future. It means you have to overcome that emotion. The body, as the unconscious mind, does not know the difference between the actual experience in your life that creates the emotion and the emotion that you're fabricating by thought alone. To the body, it's exactly the same. You can't wait for your healing to feel wholeness. You can't wait for your wealth to feel abundance. You can't wait for your success to feel empowered. You can't wait for the mystical moment to feel awe. You can't wait for your new relationship to feel love or your new job to feel gratitude. That's the old model of reality of cause and effect. Waiting for something outside of you to change how you feel inside of you. But the quantum model of reality is about causing an effect, which means when you feel whole, you begin to heal. When you feel empowered, you're going to be successful. When you're worthy enough, you'll feel abundant. When you are in love with life and in love with yourself, you will find an equal or it will find you. And when you are in awe of the moment, the mystical, is going to bless you in a way that you never anticipated. And when you are in a state of gratitude, your job is on the way. That's causing an effect. And by the way, what is the emotional signature of gratitude? Don't you give thanks when you get something or you receive something? So then, what if you were to begin to give thanks or feel thanks before it manifested. Would your body as the unconscious mind believe it's in the future experience in the present moment? Because gratitude is the ultimate state of receivership. And so we don't pray in our work to have our prayers answered. We get up as if our prayers are already answered. And it is that state of mind and body that I know that requires a clear intention and an elevated emotion. And the clear intention is an act of the mind and the brain. And an elevated emotion is when you open your heart. And when you combine those two elements, you just moved from living in your past to living in your future. So then, Here's the question. Can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, but you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain is literally changed to look like the experience has already occurred? The latest research in neuroscience says you can change your brain just by thinking. And can you fall in love with a future potential that already exists in the quantum field? And how many potentials exist in the quantum field? Hello? A few? How about infinite? Infinite potentials in the quantum field. Can you select a new potential in the quantum field and emotionally embrace that future reality before it's made manifest to such degree that your body is the unconscious mind is believing it's living in that future reality in the present moment and you're signaling new genes and new ways to change your body 
to look like the experience has already occurred. If there's physical evidence, physical evidence in your brain and body to look like the experience has already happened, there's evidence there physically. By thought alone. Relax. Because the experience is going to find you. And it's going to come in a way that you least expect. Why? Because if you can expect it, it's nothing new. It's got to rock your world. It's got to catch you off guard and it has to leave no doubt that what you did inside of you produced some effect outside of you. And when you correlate the changes you've made inside of you with the effect that you produced outside of you, you're going to pay attention to what you did and you're going to do it again. And that's called human empowerment. And the experience when it finds you is going to surprise you because it's an unknown. And the event is going to capture all of your attention because that's what a new experience does. And the emotion that's created from that event is going to create a long-term memory. And you're going to associate what you did inside of you with what you created outside of you. And I don't care who you are or what's happened in your past, but when that moment lands in your lap, you are going to look back at your entire past and you're not going to want to change one thing about it because it brought you to that elegant present moment. And that's when the past no longer exists. You asked yourself a question like, what would it be like to create this new job? What would it be like to go on this adventure? What would it be like to change something about myself? The moment you ask that question, the frontal lobe, like a great symphony leader, has connections to all other parts of the brain. And it begins to select different networks of neurons that's housed in the brain from something you learned intellectually or something you experienced. And it seamlessly pieces them together to fire in a new way and you get a vision, you get an idea. That hologram that you see is a potential in the quantum field that you're selecting. It's an unknown. But the passionate person who does this, the thought that they're embracing in that moment becomes the experience. And they begin to feel the joy, the excitement, the inspiration, the enthusiasm, and theos filled with God. They come out of their resting state and they feel the emotion before the event. And that emotion is giving the body a sampling of the future. And you just moved into a new state of being. And what did you do? You sat down and you wrote down all the choices you were going to make. And you reviewed them over and over again. Then you wrote down the behaviors you were going to demonstrate. The things you were going to do. And you reviewed them. Committing them to your conscious mind. Firing and wiring over and over again. Giving yourself a direction. You wrote down your goals, the experiences you wanted to walk into. And the more you wrote those goals down, the more you felt enlivened. But then, you did something really brilliant. You lit a match in a dark place. And you started to write down the thoughts of the old self that stood in the way. I can't, it's too hard, I'll never change, I'll never be successful. You became conscious of those unconscious thoughts and you would never let that thought slip by you unchecked in your waking day. And then you wrote down the choices you weren't going to make. And I don't care if you were losing weight or gaining weight or making muscles or stop eating certain things or changing your lifestyle. You reviewed those choices and you became so conscious of those unconscious choices that you wouldn't make that unconscious choice again. And then you reviewed your habits and you decided what you were no longer going to do. Whether you're going to wake up early, whether you're going to stop watching TV, 
whether you stop eating certain foods, doesn't matter. But you made a decision with firm intention. And the amplitude of that decision carried a level of energy that caused your body to respond to your mind. And then you reviewed the experiences that you were going to stay away from. And you became very conscious of those emotions that would bring you to a lower level, drop your energy. And every day you weaved the path from the old self to the new self. And you reached a point in your life after you did it enough times, those long nights, lonely moments, stepping out into the unknown, where you knew it was going to happen. You knew it. You just knew that everything lined up. And that's when you relaxed. You surrendered. Now it was no longer about creating the event, the experience was fact that you did it. When you relax into it like that, you start loving yourself a little bit more. And the side effect of that is you start giving, you start caring, you're more present, you're less in survival. So you see, you already know how to do this. There's an intelligence that's giving you life right now. It's keeping your heart beating and digesting your food and organizing trillions of functions in every single cell of your body. It's organizing mutations in your DNA. There's some invisible force that's giving you life. But that same intelligence that's keeping your heart beating and digesting your food is the same intelligence that's creating supernovas in distant galaxies and causing flowers to bloom. It's both personal and universal. It's within you and it's all around you. And you can't see it and you can't smell it and you can't, can't taste it and you can't feel it. But it is the giver of life. And it is a consciousness. And consciousness is awareness. And awareness is paying attention. And it is the observer observing you into life. Look. Either you're going to be defined by a vision of the future or the memories of the past. When you stop creating, it just means you're more in love with your past than you are with your future. That's all. But you know, that intelligence that's giving you life, the observer, you can develop a relationship with it. And when your will matches its will, and it has an amazing will. When your mind matches its mind, and it has an infinite mind, and when your love for life matches its love for life, it always answers the call.